Human resources, human capital, people, and culture. This single vocation has many names. HR professionals are responsible for what is arguably the most critical success factor within any organization, its talent. HR Studio Podcast brings you bi-weekly interviews with HR executives, thought leaders, authors, speakers, and trend spotters from the world of HR and beyond. Listen, learn, and leverage. Welcome to HR Studio Podcast, building the next generation of HR leaders. HR Studio is brought to you by AJ O'Connor Associates, a trusted human capital consulting partner to emerging, mid-market, and world-class organizations. For over 35 years, AJO has built its reputation on experienced listening, exceptional quality, and caring partnerships, delivering services in 30 states and 20 countries. To learn more, visit us at ajoconnor.com and be sure to check out our top-ranked HR blog and sign up to receive email alerts while you're there. So welcome to HR Studio Podcast, everyone. My name is Fred Bunsa, and I'm your host for today's episode. We're going to be joined again by John Storm. We spoke with John in our last podcast. John is the founder of Brainstorm Network, based out of Norman, Oklahoma. And John has been specializing in innovation and in creativity and in brainstorming for over 20 years. Um, He's the founder of the network. He works with organizations to bring their ideas to life, and he works with people to do the same thing. He helps us get unstuck spark fresh thinking, and, ge- and gener- generate game-changing solutions and results. Um, you can see John's bio in our show notes, but um, let's let John himself talk about himself. Welcome to the podcast, John. Hi, Fred. Glad to be here. Yeah, Looking good forward. to have you back on. Um, so last episode, we talked... More about brainstorming, the, the name of your organization, right? Brainstorming. Um, as you know, our listeners are largely in HR roles, but you know they're leaders throughout organizations. So um, I'd like to have this podcast really be a good way to help them learn how to do better brainstorming to deliver better results in their roles. So could you just give us a little back? Expert. Well, this is kind of the fun part because I get to tell a little bit about my story because I've been around brainstorming pretty much my whole life because I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. My dad was a wild idea person and the average dinner table conversation every night when he got home was, hey, I got a new million dollar idea. (laughs) Uh, Now, most of those ideas were horrible ideas and we would have a great time at his expense. But he did have a few million dollar ideas and so growing up in that environment was a, a lot of fun. He had a he and his brother started a business called Storm Lures. It was our family's business in the fishing lure industry, and so I grew up in and around that. It, the business started not long after I was born, so I got to see the good, the bad, and the ugly about entrepreneur life. And never thought I'd go to work there, but after I graduated from college, Dad needed a little bit of help for a couple of months, and that turned into 14 years. So. I, my role at the company was the marketing director, so I called on all the big accounts, Walmart, Kmart, Bass Pro Shops, and then I had about 70 reps in the field, so when you're in consumer products, you're constantly coming up with new ideas all the time for marketing, sales, promotions, you name it. So it was a great Petri dish for learning how to brainstorm. So then the company got sold and had a little bit of time to think about what's the intersection between my passion, what I'm, I love to do, and what I'm good at, which was your skills, and then ultimately, is there a market need? What is the market need? And that's when I started my company, and that was in 2001. Brainstorm Network kicked that off, and basically, at the beginning, I found I thought that people would hire me more to bring them ideas because I can come up with a lot of ideas. But what I found out pretty quickly that was that it was more valuable if I could codify how I come up with ideas. And then teach people, which is a good fishing example, you can give a man a fish or you can teach a man to fish. And I learned that teaching a man to fish was a lot more valuable than just giving people ideas. So that's kind of what I've been doing, coaching, facilitating, training, speaking, all around the topic of generating ideas. That's, that's really cool. Great story. Uh, right from the dinner table to uh, helping organizations around the country, around the world. So wh- how do you define brainstorming or what, wh- what do you consider it to be? 
Well, I think the challenging part, kind of like we talked about with innovation, brainstorming means different things to different people. But for some people, it's this strictly one method that was invented back in the 1950s by a man named Alex Osborne. He was an ad executive, and he's the one who kind of is the father of brainstorming in that one technique. He kind of laid out the rules about kind of a scene in which you sit around a conference room table and you have a facilitator and we throw ideas out. You have a couple of basic ground rules, including things like suspending judgment so you don't evaluate during the session or go for quantity. So these are kind of what people think of as brainstorming. But unfortunately, a lot of people still do that technique and they think that's brainstorming. And unfortunately, we've seen that there are three major problems with that technique. Uh, the first one is that the facilitator in most of those sessions becomes the choke point, meaning mm -hmm. I, like, I can't write fast enough as a facilitator for everyone to be throwing their ideas at me, and so people are staging or holding their ideas back uh, because I can't write. That's not the best. The second problem was social pressure. Most of us, uh, or many of us, are concerned about our image. We don't like to look stupid in public. And so there's a problem with this kind of technique if you don't manage it well and have high trust levels yes. that people hold back because they don't want to yell out too risky of an idea. The third element is just what I call the intro-extrovert issue in the sense that we, some of us are introverts, some of us are extroverts, and unless you have a good facilitator or a plan to be able to manage both of those people, the extroverts dominate, the introverts hold back, and you miss out on lots of great ideas. So. My idea about brainstorming is that really it's all of the techniques and ideas that you can use uh, to be able to crank out uh, new ideas. Because generally, most brainstorming follows the process of uh, divergence, where we're looking for large numbers, and then convergence when we start trying to narrow down. But I think the bottom line is trying to think through when I say brainstorming, I'm talking about the same thing as ideation, as you know, creative problem solving, of uh, idea generation. It all means the same thing, not just one technique. Okay. So I ask people many times, how many techniques do they know? And what do you think? How many techniques do you think most people know? Uh, I think they know, well, they probably use one, and they probably know two or three. It's probably... Exactly. It's like maybe two or three. Well, first you have to differentiate between different types of techniques. There's capturing techniques. So this is the way that we capture ideas. So in the traditional way, it's the facilitator writing them down on the board. Furiously, yeah. But there's at least a dozen different ways to capture ideas. You know, one simple one is to record the whole meeting and then have somebody transcribe it afterwards. So you're not waiting on the facilitator. Uh, you can have people write post-it notes, sticky notes, whiteboards, digital whiteboards, um, web, there's web apps that you can type your ideas in. So first there's capturing techniques. Okay. My favorite though is to think about the sparking techniques yeah. because a sparking technique is what's going to make you think differently or to come up with ideas in a different way than what you've done before. Mm -hmm. And this is where most people only know a couple of these, but there's at least 50 or 60 that I am aware of. I probably invented or come up with variations of 20 or 30 different ones. So I'll give you one example. Okay. Uh, my favorite, I'm, let's talk about, sometimes you're brainstorming by yourself. I call that solo storming. And there's some solo techniques storming. that you can use when you're sitting there by yourself. These are things like card decks or props or magazines or things that just get you looking at things in a different way. But then you have team storming when you've got a group together and there's some other things that you can use to kind of get them thinking about. So one of my favorite proven techniques that I didn't invent, but there's lots of variations. It's called, I call it role storming, R-O-L-E. And it's where you, where you think about a role and you assume the role of someone else as you approach your problem. Okay. So you probably remember the fad a long time back called that was WWJD. What would Jesus do? So the whole idea was thinking about what would Jesus do in this situation. Hopefully they would do something good. <laughs> uh, but, you know there were bracelets, stickers. So it was a big fad. But my technique, I say WWXD, and XD is anyone okay. that you can think of. Maybe it's somebody that you. Um, that you really admire and respect. Maybe it's an inventor. Maybe it's a cartoon character. 
maybe it's a superhero, uh, any of these roles, and the whole technique comes down to looking at your problem and saying, what would X do in this situation? And that shifts your whole mindset. So you're thinking, well, what would Superman do? And you start thinking about that. What would Oprah do? What would, I mean, pick your favorite people. It doesn't matter, but that gets you so much into a different mindset. It's a blast. Yeah. So, so you could, uh, you know, we, in our last podcast, we talked about Elon Musk. And so you might say, if you're coming up with a, a new way of approaching your industry or something, what would Elon Musk do in this situation or in this, in these circumstances? And you'd think completely differently than what you might think of without that kind of a framing. Right, and I mean, you're working with the HR folks here, and HR people know it's human resources. So you think about humans that you admire. How do we get humans to do things differently? How historically have we done that? Anyway, that's one of the best techniques, but that's one of about 50. So if, if people only know one, then you're shortchanging their ability to really be able to spark brand new ideas. Okay. And, do you, John, do you have um, an approach to... Uh, brainstorming with a team based on the problem that the team is going to be working on, or does the problem or the issue not really matter? It's more about the kind of people that's going to be in the room. It does. It does matter. And I think it's there are all kinds of factors if you really want to create the perfect brainstorm. In fact, I'm working on a new resource called How to Create the Perfect Brainstorm, kind of a play on the Perfect Storm movie. So, you know, give an example. I worked with a pharmaceutical company once. I had 21 PhDs in the room and I tried a technique on uh, for them to brainstorm and it's called animal storming so it's where you pick your favorite animal and then you assume the identity or the characteristics that we give to animals you know what they hated that I they hated that technique I always think about that if you've worked for 20 years to get your PhD most PhDs aren't really silly so they didn't want to assume the role of an animal they hated that Gosh. so there was one we were working on a product with a specific group of people and I, I tried to risk and pick the wrong technique now I switched over to one called tool storming and they're all engineer types that are just hardcore about tools and you know I gave a smattering of 10 or 15 different tools out on the table and man they were all over that <laughs> so I think it's a fairly customized situation to have the perfect brainstorm. Sometimes it's the, the type of problem you're trying to solve is critical. Other times you have to take effect into the type of people that are going to be there. All right. So, so really it's, 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 we put our consulting hat on and we think about not just what's the problem to be solved, but who's going to be, who are the people in the room that we're, we're pulling in to solve this and our methods need to match who, who we're working with. Yeah, so one other quick example in that one, 21 PhDs, all were men, okay? There wasn't one woman in the room. The product that we were brainstorming about was 50% of their customers were women, oh boy. okay? So I said, guys, we have a little bit of a diversity issue here. I mean, we don't even, there's a nurse that came in to pitch about this. She knew more than most of the PhDs, but they didn't invite her to the brainstorming session. I'm going, guys, what can we do here? Yeah. So anyway, wow. you, you kind of know, you have to kind of look at what you're dealt, and then you have to try to give them some tips about how you can overcome some of those things. Okay. So how can um, different leaders within or organizations, HR leaders in particular, model better brainstorming? Well, I have kind of two tips I, that I'd like to share in thinking about. I think the first one is being proactive in Be trying proactive. to create or enhance a culture of innovation. So what is it that, H, I mean, HR has is such a critical role in looking and being kind of a beacon or a, a uh, advocate for an environment where all employees' ideas are welcome, valued, considered, evaluated, selected, executed, rewarded, celebrated. I mean, this is, brainstorming as a whole is a great example of the value of diversity. So the first is trying to think through how do we be proactive in creating this culture. The second um, tip or how you model, how they might be able to model better brainstorming is to brainstorm with your own HR team, pick a hot topic or a high stakes issue, and then get some professional facilitator to come in and watch and learn and model what you do and then train you, this cadre of skilled facilitators 
to do that within your organization. So you're not going to hire a professional facilitator for every brainstorm. You should be brainstorming, you know, 24-7 yeah. di with different types of events. But build a program that's customized to your organization. For the, like one of my favorites is the stand-up brainstorm. Sometimes you just need five minutes. In fact, you make everyone stand up. You tell them, we've got five minutes. This is what we got to talk. And everybody gives a quick pitch, okay. and boom, let's go back to work. Okay, you don't have to spend five hours holed up in a brainstorming room. You can you know, create a variety. So those two things, model it with your own meetings, and then be proactive. Okay. Um, and is there a way that you can recommend for HR leaders to equip people in their organizations besides the modeling that you talked about, but to equip them to be better at brainstorming? Well, I mean, these kind of, what you're doing in the podcast world is awesome because it exposes people to different things. And so hopefully they've gotten a few ideas out of this podcast of just how they might be able to do brainstorming things themselves. So being personally aware, getting some additional skills training, recognizing that creativity can be taught experimenting with different techniques in your own meetings and one idea that I often use uh, to give people that we'll do is we say do a brainstorm on how to improve our meetings Ooh, so that's the topic. A topic how do we improve our meetings and I've done this at a lot of different groups and you know what they will brainstorm like crazy on how to improve meetings because most meeting cultures waste way too much time <laughs> They're, they don't follow rules. They're, it's just bad. But if you'll give your team or your people a chance to brainstorm just about that simple topic, wow, the amount of money you can save in reducing the amount of meetings that you have or making sure you have the right people in the meeting or sure. those kind or of things. Or even having less meetings uh, around yes. topics that are important. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, John, um, what kind of, um, do you have any resources that would help people in brainstorming that we could offer to our podcast listeners? You bet. I've got, uh, just like we did in the Culture of Innovation, I put together a packet. And if people just want to email me and say brainstorm packet in the okay. subject line, my email is john at brainstormnetwork.com. And I'll send a different packet. Uh, it's a PDF that has a variety of different resources. One of the best ones is, I came up with a little tool a couple of years ago that just has seven different techniques on it. I call it pocket storming. You can fold it up, put it in your pocket. And if somebody only knows one technique, then this one little piece of paper that you can print off on an eight and a half by 11, all of a sudden you're seven times more effective. Excellent. You've got seven different options. And yes. so I'll put that in there and it'll be kind of fun. That's great. And we're going to, we'll include those in, in our show notes as well. So John, as we wrap up then, um, any final comments for our rising HR leaders and leaders throughout organizations in various functional areas to help them in the challenging roles that they have where brainstorming can, can be of, an, of help to them. Is there anything you could suggest? I think just the, I guess the mantra would be go beyond brainstorming and just hmm. don't yeah. settle for using old outdated, outdated brainstorming techniques. I think about sometimes innovation is like building a house. And imagine if they only gave you two tools to build a house. Let's say a hammer and a screwdriver. Well, think about it. Are you going to get the best house? Are you going to be able to do it well? Are you going to maximize the skill sets of the people? No. But if your organization only knows a couple, and there's a whole plethora of tools that would help you build a better innovation house, man, open up your mind reach out. There's lots of good resources. I'll be glad to share mine, but there's a lot of other good people out there. So Great. Well, go John, beyond brainstorming. All right. Yeah. Go beyond. So, John, thank you so much for being our guest on the podcast today in this episode of A.J. O'Connor's HR Studio Podcast. I also want to thank our listeners, our growing list of listeners and subscribers. If you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, please go to hrstudiopodcast.com. You can receive the show notes, you can subscribe there, and you can access some of the free materials that John's going to be offering us as well. John, we really appreciate your time today, and um, thanks for being our guest. Thank you, Fred, and thank you, Kyle, behind the scenes. You guys are good people out there, so thanks for the help. All right, have a good day. 
Thank you for listening to HR Studio Podcast, building the next generation of HR leaders. To discover additional information from this week's episode and to catch up on all episodes, visit hrstudiopodcast.com. Subscribe to the HR Studio Podcast list while there and receive alerts and future updates.